Okay, so here is the next section. Ionic compounds containing three no longer binary elements. Okay, so this is where things sometimes get a little hairy for people. But if you think about this as just a group of atoms that can travel around and have a charge together that you have to keep together in a little group, then it's a little easier, I think. So for example, um, in biology, we've talked about phosphate. So the phosphate ion, if you take a look at this uh, part here on your sheet, you will see that the phosphate ion, and there's two, you'll see phosphate and phosphite. Don't worry about the other one right now. Phosphate ion, it says PO4, and then there's a little three minus on the top corner. So, in the same way that, uh, let's say, calcium phosphate, or sorry, phosphide, well, calcium is uh, 2 plus, and phosphorus is 3 minus. Calcium is Ca. Phosphorus is P. We have Ca3P2. We just did this. That's how that worked. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case is instead of phosphide, we're going to say calcium phosphate. When you see that H at the end, it tells you it's no longer just phosphorus. It's phosphorus and a gang. Okay, and that gang is PO4. And they travel around as a team and they don't separate. But as a group, they have a charge of also 3 minus. Same charge that phosphorus by itself has. Okay? And they travel around together. And if we multiply this by 2, in the same way we put P2, we have to put PO4 and we have to make the whole thing 2. So this gang, which actually looks kind of like this. It's P in the middle, and then uh, an O and a bunch of O's around it. It's minuses. It doesn't really matter, but this little group hangs out, P and four O's. But all together, they balance out. It doesn't matter that there's O's and P's, and this is three, and this is two. Somehow it all balances out to be three minus. All right? So... Once you know that it's phosphate and it's PO4, don't worry about the inner workings of it. All this doesn't really matter. It's just a little bubble of stuff. And if there's only one of them, we put PO4. And if there's two of them, we put PO4 in brackets and put a 2 after it. In the same way that we put P2, phosphor, phosphate, all travels together and becomes PO4, 2. Some of you may be saying, what? That's okay. If you just think of it, calcium phosphide, we had the charge on calcium and the charge on whatever is over here. 2, two plus, 3 minus, cross them over, make that Ca3, P, uh, Ca3, P2. When it's calcium phosphate, it's still Ca, but instead of P, it is now PO4. So that's the phosphate part. Okay? And if there's only one of them, we treat this as one thing, and it's just one if we have to multiply it by 2 or 3, we put brackets around it to say it's traveling together, and it's all multiplied by whatever we put after it. So in this case, calcium has a charge of 2 plus. Phosphate, we know, has a charge of 3 minus. 2 goes down here, 3 goes down here. But the 2 that goes over here goes after some brackets to say we've actually got two groups of this whole thing. So it's actually two phosphoruses and eight oxygens. 
which may make you think, uh, is it, is it eight, plus, 8 minus now? or No, it's all still 3 minus and then another 3 minus. And over here we have a 2 plus and another 2 plus and another 2 plus, and all that ended up being 6 and 6, so it all worked out. So this would be CA3PO4 phosphate 2. And so all these ions that you see, and this is also on your sheet here, on this top part, it shows some common ions. I'm gonna not don't worry about the one plus one right now. Just all the minus ones. This minus ones are all here, minus twos are all here, minus threes are all here. Okay? And some of them, their names look similar. Like for example, you can see phosphate and phosphite. Well, they're both 3 minus, so they're both in this column, but one's PO4, phosphorus with four oxygens, and one's PO3, phosphorus with three oxygens. And somehow, they both manage to be minus 3 charge overall. So it doesn't really matter. You don't have to worry about how that happened exactly, but just the fact is, they both have a charge of minus 3. So, if you were given what is sodium, phosphite. Well, sodium is Na. Phosphite, you look at the back, you see it's not phosphide, it's phosphite. And the ITE or the ATE tells you to go to the back of your sheet and find out what that group is. And it's PO3. The charge on sodium is 1 plus. The charge on phosphite is 3 minus. You put the 3 over here. Put the one over here, so Na3PO3 is sodium phosphite. The dividing line between the two of them, between the plus part and the minus part, is right here. Sodium, three of them. Phosphite, one of them. So, let's try a couple. Uh, the first one is lithium hydroxide. So, lithium hydroxide. Lithium is Li, and it's 1 plus. By the way, on your sheet, where you have your question, lithium hydroxide, you can just write one plus on top of there. Hydroxide, if you look on the back, you'll see that it is OH, so OH, and it has a charge of also one minus. So this is again a group that travels together. One plus and one minus is one and one, so the formula is just LiOH. But when you see that, LiOH, you need to think Here's my positive side, and here's my negative side. All right, if it had been uh, calcium, which is 2 plus, we would have to go 2 down here, but it has to be all of this together, OH, and then another OH. OH2 means you take the whole group, multiply it by 2. So CaOH2 would be calcium hydroxide. Now, just because we're dealing with a new thing, like phosphate and groups that travel together, doesn't mean our front half can't still also be maybe gold with a plus three charge. So gold, just making this up now, but gold can be three. Uh, gold three phosphate. So gold three phosphate, gold is AU, phosphate PO4. 
gold from the number here, we know that it's 3 plus. Phosphate is 3 minus. You recheck the back of your sheet. 3 and 3 come down to be 1 and 1, so this would just be AUPO4. And again, you've got to remember that there's your dividing line between your positive ion and your negative ion. So, what if this was instead cobalt 2 phosphate? Cobalt 2 phosphate, still phosphate. Cobalt is CO, and from the number we know it's 2 plus. So 2 down here, 3 down here. Cobalt 3, phosphate, all together, 2. So the whole formula would be CO3, PO4, 2. Now I skipped over something. First of all, um, there's carbonate at the top of the 2 column, 2 minus, is CO3, 2. And there's also bicarbonate. HC, uh, HCO3, which is a 1 minus charge, so be aware of that. And also there's some positive ones, ammonium and hydronium. So sometimes you will encounter, so far, the beginnings of our ionic compounds have all been a metal. But we have two positive groups. So ammonium is NH4. So let's do one with NH4. Ammonium. Uh, let's do ammonium chloride. Ammonium, as you can see from the back here, is a 1 plus charge. Chloride is a 1 minus charge. Ammonium is NH4. Four. And again, that's a whole group that travels and all has a combined plus one charge. And chlorine has a one minus charge. One goes down here, one goes down here, so it's just NH4Cl, ammonium chloride. Now, what if it was ammonium phosphate? Phosphate, ammonium, NH4. Phosphate, PO4. Phosphate has a 3 minus charge, so we need 1 phosphate and 3 ammoniums. So this is what we have to put the 3 in front of, but we can't just put it here, it's NH43. So we put brackets around the whole NH, the whole ammonium, and put a 3. So there's ammonium phosphate. Those are called polyatomic ions. This is an ion. It's got a charge, 3 minus, but it's got multiple atoms in it. Polyatomic. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five atoms makes an ion that travels as a group. polyatomic ions. So the thing to look for with polyatomic ions is does it end with eight or ite? If it does, you've got to check out this area here. The next section, binary covalent compounds, is probably the easiest thing. These are compounds that are only two nonmetals. 
So I'm not going to write them out, but all of the prefixes, which is what you put at the beginning of them, is uh, what you put before the number, before the name of the, um, the atom you're talking about. Let's explain that. So mono is one, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, and deca. And basically the name tells you exactly how many atoms of each you need. Um, and sometimes you'll use monoxide, and sometimes you'll just use oxide, but um, mostly, let's say, uh, so sometimes mono is not necessary. But I'm going to jump to uh, exercise 6b, P2O5. Now, when we know, um, we know to use these names if everything is over in this corner, and also hydrogen, so they're non-metals, not any of these metals here. These are not ionic compounds anymore. So P two O five. So we say two is di, and O uh, five is penta. Okay. The number gives us the word beginning. Then we take phosphorus. and oxide, and we combine them together. We say di, phosphorus, pent, we, uh, because it's a two vowels, we just say pentoxide. So di, phosphorus, pent, oxide. The di is the two, the pent is the five. Phosphorus is P, oxygen is O. So let's jump down to exercise 7, carbon monoxide. So we know that carbon is C, and monoxide means 1O. And that's it, carbon monoxide. Silicon tetrabromide. Silicon, again, this is close enough to the nonmetals. Silicon, SI and it doesn't have a number thing in front of it, no, no uh, prefix. Uh, tetrabromide. Bromine. Tetra is 4. So SiBr4. Silicon dioxide. Silicon, one of them. Di is 2. Oxide is O. SiO2. So those aren't too bad, I think. Exercise 8, uh, we're getting into mixing all of these different things, um, and you have to just be a little careful to see, are they molecular or are they ionic? So when I do the answers to those ones, just be careful. Magnesium, you just look at the first one. If the first one is over here, magnesium, that's an ionic. Copper 2. That the Roman numeral 2 is a giveaway that it's also a metal. Also, copper is a metal. Carbon, though, carbon is a nonmetal. So that's going to be carbon disulfide, and it also makes sense because disulfide has a di in it. So that's a molecular compound. It's going to be C for copper, uh, carbon, sorry, and sulfur 2, CS2. Lead 4 oxide, the 4 again tells us that it's a metal. Also, lead is a metal. Sodium bromide, sodium is a metal. Sulfur dioxide, sulfur and oxygen are both nonmetals. Are both nonmetals, and so that's also why the dye is there too. SO2. Aluminum oxide, aluminum is a metal. Nitrogen trichloride, nitrogen and chlorine are both nonmetals, and also the tri is there. Nitrogen 1, chlorine 3, NCl3. Gold 2 selenide, SE is selenium. Gold is a metal, so it's going to be an ionic compound. Same thing goes with exercise 9. You need to take a look um, for 
whether it's nonmetals. And actually, this is kind of harder because um, you can't see the dyes and the tries and the tetras in the name already. You have to say, is it a, is it a nonmetal? Or is, is, is it a metal or is it a nonmetal at the beginning? So A is sodium, metal. PB, metal, lead. Arsenic. Mm, arsenic, if it has a minus charge, if the first thing has a negative charge, then it is um, a nonmetal. So this one here would be arsenic, uh, AS2S5. So this is arsenic and sulf sulfide, and it's di-penta, so di-arsenic penta sulfide. But you know that it's one of these di-tri things because the first element is in the nonmetals and has a negative charge. Zinc oxide, zinc is a metal. Potassium iodide, potassium is a metal. SNS2, that's tin, a metal. CuCl2, copper, a metal. CCl4, carbon and chlorine. Carbon tetrachloride, that's going to be a molecular compound. AgCl, Ag, uh, Ag is silver, a metal. H2O, there's our water. You could just call it water, but if we're going to be technical about it, it would be dihydrogen monoxide, because the hydrogen in this case is going to be uh, a non-metal. So dihydrogen monoxide. SNO2, tin is a metal. CON, cobalt, is a metal. Okay, I hope that helps.